This is a Ringworld megastructure, a completely traversable Ringworld 3020 blocks in diameter built within the confines of a normal Minecraft world. And I'm going to show you how I built it, alien structures and all. Oh, and you see that big planet over there? We're gonna build that too. It's useful to think of a ring world functioning as a reverse planet. When standing on a planet, you're being pulled towards its center by gravity. A ring world functions by creating artificial gravity through centrifugal force. Think of it like those carnival rides that stick you to the walls by spinning super fast. Since you're standing on the inside of a hollow circular object, you can traverse the entirety of it until you end up back where you started. And that right there is the most important part of building a ring world in Minecraft. 360 degree traversability. Going into this project, I had a few ideas of how I might achieve this goal. Fortunately, none of my original ideas ended up working. Initially, I considered building a vertical ring using data packs to increase the max world height by a thousand blocks or more, because a 320 block ring world would be lame. I scrapped this idea once I realized how laggy placing blocks super high up is. Hmm. Oh, I should mention, my ring world is based off of Halo installations from the Halo franchise, mainly installation 04. The only option left for creating a gigantic ring world was that of building a horizontal ring instead of a vertical one, thus allowing a diameter of almost indefinite size, or 3,020 blocks across, the same diameter of the circle I used to achieve the curvature desirable for the arms of my last build, Installation 00. The structure responsible for creating halo rings. Where would someone go to activate the other rings? Why the Ark, of course. By the way, you should totally go check out that video if you haven't seen it yet. You can even find both of these builds on my Patreon if you want to explore them for yourselves. I initially thought a horizontal ring would make any traversability impossible, thus negating the entire point of the video. Because you can't stand on walls, can you? I decided to search CurseForge for Gravity Mod, and look what I found! I realized that this mod could rotate gravity in all six directions for the player, and it was like Christmas came early. Not only could I make a gigantic ring, but I could also achieve 100% traversability. The ring only has three relevant measurements, a diameter of about 3,020 blocks, a width of 105 blocks, and a depth of about 35 blocks. For reference, my last manga structure was only 2,383 blocks in diameter. It's kind of small. A few world edit commands later, and I can already provide an impressive demonstration of the ring's gravity. Once you reach the halfway point between two of the flatter sides, I'm not really sure of a better way to describe that, you can rotate the gravity forward and suddenly, instead of climbing up, you're falling down. So I'm working on building the frame the train will sit in and it looks like the commands I was using to create circles of blocks also created interesting patterns. Unfortunately, those interesting patterns will have to be filled in by hand. Epic. That was annoying. I only filled in one eighth of the way around the ring. In fact, as some of you probably guessed, I'm only building part of the ring by hand, one eighth of it to be specific. Once I complete one eighth, I can flip it and paste it again to get one quarter, which I can rotate and paste three more times to complete the entire frame. Pretty simple. It would be foolish to try and decorate the exterior in a curved position, so I'm going to make a giant straight wall the same size as the curved area it needs to fill. Once I complete the details on a flat surface, I'll bend the whole thing into a curve. I love the percentage replace command so much.
bending, also known as moving sections of the build one block at a time in the correct direction. Now the first eighth has been slotted into place. Holy sh**, this looks insane! All of the extra is in place, not that you'll see all of it here because it takes several minutes to fly around the entire ring. So here begins the most challenging part of this build. Taking a giant flat strip of terrain and bending it into a circle. It's a little hard to describe, so I'll just demonstrate what I mean instead. As you can imagine, it wasn't fun getting this strip of terrain here either because I had to rip an 8,000 block long stretch of terrain from another Minecraft world and put it in this world. I also managed to get both ends of the big strip to be ocean, meaning the whole thing should fit together seamlessly when the two ends join together. Before I rotate the strips 90 degrees and begin bending them to fit the ring, I'm going to build those small structures because trying to build sideways would be a nightmare. As I mentioned, this ring is based off of Halo, and a feature commonly found on Halo rings are these iconic beam emitter towers. Occasionally, these towers shoot large beams of energy into the sky. But I'll get to that a little bit later. This tower here is about 1 to 1 scale, which I decided on because other 1 to 1 scale structures like villages and mine shafts are already present on the ring. Oh, and there's two of these beam towers, on opposite sides of the ring from each other. But I'm not done. I planned for third and final and a much larger structure located deep in the mountains of my ring world. is the control room, or half of it. In Halo, the control room is exactly what it sounds like. It's a remote structure from which the ring's super weapon can be activated. But what I've built here is only the exterior. This also definitely isn't one-to-one -one scale, thanks to the size constraints of the ring. No joke, this room took an entire day of building to get right. Using complementary shaders and diamond ore, I found a way to recreate the small glowy bits in the walls present in Halo CE anniversary graphics. But my favorite part is the holographic representation of the ring itself. I even made the colors here represent those of my ring. And now, the control room, the room itself, is actually done. Oh boy, I've been pointed off, but I need to finally get around to bending the terrain. <laughs> I immediately ran into some problems. Since the train is rotated on its side, blocks affected by gravity like sand and gravel have to be replaced since otherwise they'll just fall down into the void. Water will also attempt to spill everywhere. My solution to the water problem ended up being to put a layer of structure void blocks over the water to stop it flowing. First, I tried flipping the train and bending it in the same world as the ring. I rage quit after getting halfway through one of eight pieces of train. So I switched to a new world for each piece of train and lagged my way through two entire pieces, or one quarter of the ring. This took hours and I wanted to break my computer, but it do look cool. Finally, I decided to switch Minecraft versions. The ring itself is restricted to 1.18.1 due to the gravity mods compatibility. I decided to try bending the train in new 1.19.2 worlds. 
This instantly solved the performance problem. There was no chance I would build these energy beam towers without making them shoot energy beams. I mean, come on, that's the most iconic part of them, and all it took was a little bit of redstone and some command blocks. Oh, check out that block count of my ring. 36 million blocks. Almost 37. Essentially double the count of installation 00. Heck, just the stone by itself is equal to the entirety of my last build. That's neat and all, but look at that terrain! At any point on the ring, you can look up and see the other side far away above you. That's something I never expected to see in Minecraft. Yeah, I don't think this game was intended to have the player traversing 360 degrees around the inside of a structure, but I made it work. <laughs> 